Hi everyone, I'm Lachlan McRae and welcome back to my channel, Ecology Insights. In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up and pack down a harp trap as well as give you some deployment tips and tricks. With that out of the way, let's get into it. Let's start by familiarizing ourselves with the different components of a harp trap. You have the horizontal base pole, which should have a plastic sleeve around it to prevent bats from climbing out of the capture bag. Two vertical poles, which extend and tighten the fishing line. Four legs, which can also extend to raise the trap up into the air. Two boomerang looking pieces and two leg mounts. You then have a top piece, which holds the fishing line and there are four metal cylinders that make up that piece. Four guy ropes for stabilizing the harp trap. Mesh to put underneath the trap to prevent bats from flying underneath it. You should also have a capture bag, which is this piece here. Now that you're familiar with the different parts of a harp trap, I'll show you a time-lapse video of the construction process before I go into each step in detail. Now that you can see the end goal, I'm going to elaborate on each step. Here you have the leg mount piece and the metal pin, the screw that goes onto there, and the boomerang piece. Once you've attached the boomerang pieces to the leg mounts and then attached each one of those two pieces to this horizontal piece, you're then ready to put the two vertical poles on. With the two vertical poles inserted, you can then put this piece on top. You then want to push in the small metal cylinder that allows you to remove the first of two poles that holds the fishing line. Using a key or a stick can make this process easier. Now carefully lower the fishing line, keeping an eye on each end to ensure no strings wrap over the end and get tangled. It helps to hold your hand on each end to prevent this from happening. We now want to extend these vertical poles so it will stretch this fishing line so it's tight and then the bats will fly into it, get caught and they'll fall down into the capture bag. To extend the vertical poles, you will want to place your foot on the base mounting piece to hold it down. You then unscrew this piece and pull up with your arms while pushing down with your foot. It requires a reasonable amount of strength to extend the poles fully. You want to extend the two vertical poles enough so that the fishing line is not so tight that a bat will hit it and bounce off, but also not so loose that a bat might just be able to push through and fly through it. So there's a bit of a sweet spot. You can test it by pushing on the strings and you want to feel a little bit of resistance, but not too much. One trick I like to do to ensure that both vertical poles are extended the same amount is that I use my arm as a measure and just put my elbow there and so I can see this goes up to about there so then I'll go around to the other side and measure that and make sure it's up to the same amount. Once you're happy with how tight the strings are, you then want to attach the guy ropes. And so you should have four of these, and their purpose is to stabilize the harp trap 
so that wind doesn't knock it down at night. The Forntech harp traps do come with four, but you can use any type of rope, it doesn't really matter. And so if you've got a clip bit such as this, you can then just hook that on the top of the harp trap. Just like that. And then you'd go tie this to a tree or a post or whatever you can to help keep it stable. And ideally, you would have a tree or a post there, one back there, and same on the other side. It's now time to put the four legs on. Dirt can sometimes get stuck in the legs or leg mount piece, so it's good to give them a light tap to remove any dirt. It's typically best to extend a harp trap as high as possible. And something I like to do to ensure that you've got the legs fully extended is that it's good to fully pull out the leg and that lets you know that you've gone the whole way and then just put it back in a few centimetres. The next step is you want to put the capture bag on. Similar to the poles that hold the fishing line up the top, there will be black markings on one end of each of these poles and so that shows you which end that you can push in like that. So you want to put the other end in first. Once the bag's on, you want to tie these ropes so it closes the bag in and that prevents bats from climbing out. It can also help to maximise your capture numbers by tying a bit of mesh underneath the trap. So this can be particularly useful if you're trapping over water for the southern motus bat. That's because they forage low over water and this will stop them from going underneath and hopefully channel them up and into the main bit of the trap. And there you have it, a fully set up harp trap. Now that you've got the harp trap set up, there's a few extra things you can do to try and increase your chances of capturing bats. You can fill in the gaps on either side of the trap with branches or large leaves, anything like that, or extra mesh if you have some more mesh. Or another option is if you have two harp traps, is that you could maybe even move this one to the side a bit more and then set a second harp trap up next to it and then that would cover pretty much this whole area here and that would be ideal. You can also position a harp trap on a corner or a bend. The idea is that bats might get startled if they fly around a corner and all of a sudden the trap's there and they won't have enough time to react and therefore it might increase the chances that they'll fly into it. Now onto the pack down. There's nothing too special about the pack down. It's pretty much just everything you've done in the setup except in reverse order. So I'd start with taking off the mesh, taking off the capture bag, and then lowering the legs and removing the legs and going from there. When I am rolling up the fishing line, I like to hold the lower pole that the fishing line is attached to and then lightly push the harp trap frame in the opposite direction. This uses gravity to keep the fishing line nice and tight so it's easier to roll up, while also preventing the trap from falling over. Some further considerations that I might cover in future videos if you're interested is how to position a harp trap to maximise capture numbers, how to restring a harp trap, and how to remove, handle and identify captured microbats. If those topics sound interesting to you, please let me know in the comments down below and I'll consider making a video on those topics in future. That's it for this video, 
Thanks for watching and hopefully I'll see you in the next video. Cheers. Thank <laughs> you.